Okay, welcome everyone to the Ask the Expert. And I'm going to tell you, we have two amazing experts here with us today for the Amazon Web Service. On behalf of TechSoup and all of our employees here, we want to thank you for being here. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you're probably used to this, but uh, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A. Um, you could type it in the chat room as well. I think we'll be able to manage the chat room as well, but we love putting questions in the Q&A. And if you think that question, you said, oh, I was going to ask that same question, why don't you go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That'll put it at the top. This is being recorded, so it'll be sent to everybody who's registered within 48 hours. So if you hear something, it's like, you know what, what did he say? You don't remember? We'll be sending it out to you. Um, if you need the closed caption, go ahead and tap the CC button at the bottom of your screen. It'll turn on the closed caption for you. So enough about housekeeping. I'm going to get right to our speakers. We have today Jamin Gluck. He is the Global Program Manager at Amazon Web Service with the focus on empowering nonprofits, big and small, with resources they need to use the cloud technology for mission impact. Thank you so much for being here, Jamie. And we also have Mike George. He's a senior solution architect. I love that title at AWS, with a passion for working with organizations to understand their technology needs and then create solutions to meet those needs. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here with us today. Hi everyone, and thank you so much, Aretha. It's a pleasure to be here. For those near and far, I saw we had someone from Mexico and the Philippines and Oklahoma and all over the country. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Jamin Gluck. And as Aretha said, I am a global program manager with a goal to help nonprofits, big and small, leverage AWS technology to achieve their goals. So that's all today is about helping you as the nonprofits make the most of Amazon Web Services. So let me quickly share my screen and we can jump right into things. All right. So again, welcome to the Ask the Experts session. We're going to be spending about 45 to 60 minutes really understanding how to use Amazon Web Services to achieve your goals. I'm Jamin Gluck and I'm here with uh, Mike George. And in terms of an agenda, oops, let's see. Oh, no. Give me one second. I want to make sure I am sharing the correct screen. Mike, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen? Uh, yes, I can, but it's just in regular mode. It's not in presenter mode or anything. Okay, we'll take it for what it's worth. So in terms of an agenda, I'm going to talk about our AWS nonprofit programs, all of the different programs that are available to, again, support your organization to make sure that you have the resources that you need to succeed on the cloud. Then, then I'll pass the mic over to Mike. Uh, so he can run us through a little bit of some best practices when it comes to security and cost savings on AWS. And then ultimately, this is all about you. So we're going to save the most time for some Q&A. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions, be it about the credit program, perhaps about a specific Amazon Web Service solution, and, and really we'll speak to your questions to make sure that you leave with the information you know to achieve your goals. So with that, I want to go ask people to jump into the chat box and just give Mike and me a little bit of a sense of your familiarity with Amazon Web Services. Give us a plus one in the chat if you have used Amazon Web Services before. If you're currently active in AWS and know how to leverage the products. Now, give me a plus two if AWS is more new to you. You might have heard about it, perhaps, but you're really here to learn more. You've just heard that AWS exists, but you don't really know too much about it. So again, plus one if you're familiar with it, and plus two if you're not so familiar with it. Let's see. So I'm seeing some plus two. Okay, I see you, David, with a plus one and a half. It sounds like we've got some a lot of plus twos, which is excellent. This is the exact place where you want to be. Ask those questions, 
help you better understand and build on that foundation of your current understanding of AWS to learn even more. So if you did plus one, excellent. Glad to hear you have that experience. And plus twos, you're also in the exact right place. So in terms of an AWS nonprofit programs, these are the programs that exist that are able to help your organization almost self-service. So I'll put all of the links in the chat, but I'm gonna highlight them one by one really quickly. So the first one is the AWS Nonprofit Credit Program. If you are a plus two and you're not yet so familiar with what AWS is or how you can leverage AWS to achieve your mission, then this credit program is perfect for your organization as it provides $1,000 in AWS promotional credit to nonprofit all over the world, all shapes and sizes, to really help you get started and get familiar with the services and solutions. So again, I'll put that link in the chat, but you should absolutely leave knowing that there's a credit program that can help you get started on AWS with $1,000 already in your account. Another program I want to highlight is the AWS Imagine Grant Program. So this grant program, it awards up to $100,000 in cash and credits, and it's launching again in May 2022, but there are some incredible videos that can help you be inspired about the ways to leverage AWS to achieve your nonprofit's goals and really just get all those good feels about the ways technology can help organizations succeed. Additionally, I want to highlight the upcoming AWS Imagine Nonprofit Conference. So you certainly want to save the date. It's happening back in person on March 22nd through 23rd in DC of next year. So we have the, the page, the save the date page up and running. I'll send you that link and you can learn all about it. And I would love to see you there. And then the last bit of resources that I want to make sure you know are available is that any nonprofit no matter its shape, no matter its size, no matter its mission area, has the opportunity to speak with AWS experts directly. We have an entire team set up dedicated to supporting you and your mission and your use of the cloud. So I'll put that link in the chat, but you just should know that if you have a question and there's no dumb questions, if you have a question, then AWS experts are here to answer your questions and support your use of our technology. So. With that said, I am now going to pass it over to Mike to talk a little bit about some best practices, some introdu introductory knowledge to help you succeed on AWS. I think you might be muted, Mike. Yeah, so um, I am... Trying to see if I can move my screen over really quick. Well, that's fine. Are you able to see my, my yep, okay. Okay, so are you able to see my screen that says multi-factor authentication? Yep. Okay, all right. So what I wanted to do is I noticed in the chat that there were a bunch of twos, two and a halfs around, you know, even a three around how much you know about the cloud. So I wanted to talk briefly about what AWS does at a high level, and then I'll talk about two best practices. The, the first is gonna be multi-factor authentication, and we'll talk about how to control some of your costs. But first of all, let's talk briefly about what AWS is. AWS is really on-demand on delivery of IT resources via the internet with pay-as-you-go pricing. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, you think about the, the old days when you needed to get IT resources. You had to invest a lot of money up front to get you know, a database, a web server, or, or what have you. You'd have to put those in a data center. Uh, it, there was a lot of cost to do all of that. So AWS allows you to get all of those things, but on an on-demand basis. So it, it acts a lot like, uh, you know, when you flip a switch in your home to turn on a light, the power company sends you electricity. So, you know, you just get uh, power to that light exactly when you need it. You pay only for when that light is on. As soon as you turn off the switch, the power goes off. You don't pay for that anymore. That's very similar to how AWS operates. You can get IT resources, again, with this pay-as-you-go pricing. So you pay for when you use it. There's no upfront uh, investment or anything you have to make. You just pay for what you use. Okay, so we can go into a, a lot more around the, the various 
services that AWS offers, but that's basically what AWS provides at a high level. So let's talk then about really, I think the two best practices, the, the, the two most important best practices that we see uh, uh, people should really look at. And the first is multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication is something you can turn on on your AWS account. And maybe you've used multi-factor authentication on, on um, uh, other accounts that you have. If you've ever used a, a multi-factor uh, device like uh, uh, Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, Duo, I mean, there's, there's a, a handful, there's a Symantec uh, Authenticator. So there's a lot of different authenticators out there. And you may have seen this where you have a, uh, an app on your, your device that you can pull up and it gives you this one-time password that expires after about 30 seconds. And uh, you can use that as a second source of authentication to log into a website. It's a great way of helping ensure that your, your account is secure. And what it allows you to do is if for some reason someone is able to get into your account, uh, like they can guess your password, well, they can't get in if you have multi-factor authentication enabled because they have to also physically have your device in hand to be able to see this, the six digit code that changes every 30 seconds. So it's a really good way of making sure that, that your account is secured. So we really you know, highly, highly recommend that people set up multi-factor authentication in their AWS account. So let me show you how to do that. So I've logged into my AWS account here and I'm gonna show you just screenshots because if I go into the identity and access management console in my AWS account, there's a lot of really sensitive information here that I don't really want all of you to see. So I've got a screenshot and I've, I've hidden some of the things that, that I want to have be, you know, be secret. But within my AWS account, I just type IAM from the, the search box up here. And that takes me to this screen, which is the identity and access management console. Once I hit this page, I can see uh, really the security recommendations that the IAM console recommends I take. And you'll notice that the, the one in the middle says add MFA for yourself. That's gives me a prompt of turning on multi-factor authentication for my user. You'll also notice that there is a, a big add MFA button. So we recommend that all customers go in and click that button. Once you click that button, you're taken to a page that looks like this, where it shows your security credentials. Uh, it, it shows that there's a lot of information there. Like you might have access keys enabled, you, you might have uh, other credentials set up, but at the very bottom of the page, you're gonna notice another button that says assign MFA device. So you go ahead and, and click that. And if you click that, that takes you to a page or actually you get a pop-up that looks like this, where you can assign an MFA device, you can assign a multi-factor device. And for most users, we recommend that you, you just leave the first option selected that says virtual MFA device. And if you have a vert, if, so once you pick that, you, pick the, you click the continue button and it will take you to a page that looks like this, where there's a QR code that you can scan. And you can scan this with a, a variety of, of different apps that exist on your phone, like you can scan it with Authly, Duo Mobile, LastPass Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and uh, Semantic VIP. Once you scan it, it will give you that, that, uh, that code that expires within 30 seconds. You just, once you see that code, you type in the first code into this MFA code one box, you wait for that code to expire and a new code to appear. You type then the second code here in this MFA code two box and click the assign MFA button. And that's all you do. From that point on, you have multi-factor authentication enabled for your account. So every time you log in, it will ask you to enter in the, uh, the code from your authenticator application. So super, super easy. And it makes your account super, super secure. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about are AWS budgets. And to show you this, I'm actually going to log in to the console and show you what this looks like. 
Can you all see my screen that says AWS Management Console? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. So to set up, so, so to set up a, a budget alert, well, let's talk about what a budget alert is. So cost control are one of the major things that we want you to get on top of within AWS. We, uh, if, if you're using things within AWS and, and you end up spending money through the AWS console, we want to make sure that you understand exactly what is costing you money and you have controls in place so that you can reduce your spend on AWS. So we recommend that you set up budgets and a budget is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it is a, a mechanism that allows you to track how much money you're spending on AWS. You can set this up to be a recurring thing and then you can receive automatic alerts when you cross certain thresholds. So let's show you how to set that up. So I'm here within my AWS console and from the top here, I'm going to click my name and I have an option for my billing dashboard. I'll go ahead and click on that. And once I click on my billing dashboard, it shows me you know, how much I've spent in my account so far and I can see how my costs are broken out. But I have an option here on the left-hand side that says budgets. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And this takes me to a page where I can create a budget. So you go ahead and click this, this orange create a budget button. And what you've, once you've done that, you have then a couple of options of the kind of budget that you would like to create. In most cases, we recommend that you create that first option that's, that is selected, the cost budget. This allows you to manage your costs based on a specified dollar amount, and then you can receive alerts when you cross certain thresholds, which I'll show you right now. So go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and click this next button here at the bottom. And this now allows me to set up a budget amount. And you can see basically that I can set my budget amount. Um, I can scope that budget down if I want. And uh, I can then add in data like the, the name of my budget and add in thresholds. So first of all, I can pick the period for how, how often I want this budget to be valid for. You can see I have a daily, monthly, quarterly, or annually budget. We find in most cases that monthly makes the most sense. I then have the option of specifying wh whether this is a recurring budget or an expiring budget. So in some cases, if you have a grant that you receive and you want to make sure that you don't exceed um, that budget before the project is complete, you might wanna do an expiring budget. In my case, I'm just going to worry about a recurring budget where I want to, uh, I want to uh, make sure I don't spend more than a certain amount every month. I can pick my start month and I can pick either a fixed amount or I can have a, a different amount per month. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep a fixed amount and I'm gonna have um, a total monthly amount of $1,000. Now your amounts may vary. You, your amounts may be $10, $50, $100, uh, or $50,000, it just, again, it just depends on the kind of workloads that you're running. So I'm gonna have a, a estimated amount of $1,000. I have some options here where I can filter my budget so that I can make sure that my budget applies to maybe certain AWS services, or I can have it apply to all AWS services. I'm, I'm just gonna leave this alone right now. So this will apply to every piece of spend within my account. I can then give this a name. I'll just call this my budget. I'll go ahead and click next. And I have an option now of creating alerts. You can see that it says no threshold alerts created, but I have an add an alert threshold button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And I wanna set up a couple of alerts. And I find that this is really valuable to have a couple of thresholds. Oftentimes, if you have an alert go off when you've exceeded your budget, that's great that there's value there, but in many cases, it's that's too late at that point, right? If uh, I have a monthly budget and I blow through that budget on day three, uh, you know, I've, I've, that's, a, that's a problem. And so I find that it's often really, really valuable to set alerts at, you know, the 50% level, the 75% level, and the 100% level. You know, I, with, at the 50% level, I'd expect to see uh, an alert around halfway through the month. 
Likewise, with at the 75% level, I'd expect to see an alert, uh, you, you know, around the, the third week of the month. And um, if I start getting those alerts earlier than I'm expecting, I know that I'm likely going to exceed my budget and I need to slow down my spending in certain areas. Likewise, if I uh, uh, get those alerts later than I'm expecting, then I know that I'm behind budget and um, I might want to increase my spending uh, or I might want to you just keep it where it's at if, if I want to reduce my costs. So I'm going to set up three alerts here. I'm going to set up a threshold of 50%. And I'm going to just put in my email here. I'm going to add an, another alert threshold. And then I want another alert at the 75% mark. I'll put in my email. And I want a third alert at the 100% mark. Okay, so I've got my three alerts in place. I'm gonna go ahead and click this next button at the bottom. And I can now just review everything that I've got. So I've got three alerts. Alert one is at the 50% threshold. Alert two is at the 75% threshold. And alert three is at the 100% threshold. And there are more advanced options that, that you can implement at this point. If you have, if, if you already know what Amazon SNS is and you have SNS topics that you have people subscribe to, you can send that alert to an SNS topic. If you don't know what I just said, you don't need to worry about it. I'll click this next button. And this gives me a page where I can review what I've set up. And everything is okay here. So I'll go ahead and click this create budget button. This will take just a moment. And right now my budget's okay. I've spent less than a thousand dollars, but if uh, you know we're on the 10th of the month and at some point, once I hit that 50% of spend, I'll receive that alert. And then I can tell, you know, am I, am I spending too quickly or, you know, basically, am I on track here? So that's how you set up budget alerts. So with that, that those that was that was the demo that I wanted to go through. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate it. Uh, some kind of best practices if you're new or relatively new to AWS you should know as Mike just described there are ways you can manage your budget and absolutely ways you can manage your security so we had a couple of questions come in um, during your presentation Mike and I want to just put it out there team, those that are in attendance this is your time to get your questions answered by AWS experts we are here to listen and to hear what might be a current obstacle, a potential future obstacle, what has happened in the past even. Again, I remember we saw a lot of plus twos, meaning you're not very familiar with AWS. So I'm sure you have questions and now's the time to, answer, uh, to ask them. But um, as those questions come in, can um, you speak a little bit about uh, the budgets. We had Kirk asking about, is it possible to make it so that it, your service can automatically shut down when it goes over the budget while the admin intervenes and restarts it? Or how does that work in terms of what happens when you overcome or surpass a budget? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So by default, the budgets won't shut down anything that you have running. But there, there is additional functionality that you can implement through AWS Lambda and uh, through other mechanisms to, to begin shutting down things within your account if that's something you wanted to do. There are, are also a number of solutions in our solutions library, and there are third-party solutions that help with that as well. For example, in our solutions library, we have a, a solution that automatically shuts down EC2 instances uh, on a nightly basis and then turns them on in the morning. So EC2, if you're not familiar with that, is our, our virtual machine solution. So if you have a workload that only needs to be running during business hours, this is a good solution that you know shut things down uh, at the end of the day and then turns them on in the morning. So you're not paying for compute that's running during the night that nobody's using. So so I guess to answer the question, yeah, there, there are a lot of options there, uh, but that's not built into budgets out of the box. 
Excellent. Yeah, I think you, you said it perfectly there in terms of the flexibility and the multiple different types of options. Kirk, great question. And in terms of that answer, just to reiterate, there's a lot of different ways you can maneuver it. Um, we have another question about MFA talking about the phone, right? Like what happens if you lose your phone? How can you, how can you leverage MFA? Yeah, so ideally, uh, whatever you're using for that, your MFA device, you don't want to lose. Uh, that said, it is possible you could lose your phone. If you do lose your phone or if you lose basically your MFA device, there is a process to reset the MFA device. But as you can imagine, um, be, because the MFA device is, is really a, you know, a very important piece of the security of your account, we do make it we do make it, I'll say, non-trivial to reset uh, uh, an MFA token. So, you know, do bet the best you can to, to not lose it. If you're worried about losing your phone, we have customers that will buy a physical token like a YubiKey or something like that and use that as their MFA device. And then they'll lock it somewhere where they know they won't lose it. Uh, some of our, our larger customers will use something, like, again, like a YubiKey for their MFA device, and then they'll lock it in a safe deposit box at a bank. Um, so there, there are options there, but just keep that in mind. You really want to find an MFA device that you're not going to lose. Excellent. Thank you. We have another question from Carol, uh, which is a great one, asking which services do you think will benefit nonprofits the most? And if I can just add on to that, what do those services lend themselves to solutions? What are the services and the solutions that you think are most advantageous for nonprofits? This is a this is a big question because I think it really depends on where you are in your journey. So I, I work some with some customers that are very very new in their journey. You know they they don't have a lot of IT expertise, and then I work with customers that that have um, over a hundred developers on staff. So uh, you know some of the needs for one customer might be very different for another customer. Uh, if if you're new to the cloud, if if you're new to your cloud journey, then uh, Things like S3, which is our object storage, is a great solution to look at. S3 can also uh, be used for static website hosting. So if you have a static website that you want to host, it's a great way of, of hosting it uh, with, with little cost and you know, very little technical expertise needed. On the other hand, if you're a lot more advanced, uh, we, we have solutions like um, Amazon Pinpoint and Amazon Personalize. Amazon Pinpoint is a solution to, to help you stay in touch with some of your members through email or SMS or push messaging. And it allows you to essentially give the right message to your users at the right time in the, the way that they want to receive it. You can integrate that with machine learning tools we have like Amazon Personalize where you can really customize these messages that are going to your end users. So for example, if you have uh, you know, some users that tend to be more interested in donations and other users that tend to be more interested in the latest events, you can tailor the messaging that you're sending to them so that they're getting that right message. And so you're not sending a donation message to someone who has no interest in donations. And likewise, you're not sending uh, a what's new message to someone that has no interest in that. They just want to, uh, you know, donate to your cause. So uh, again, there are, there are a lot of solutions there. And like Jamin mentioned earlier, we'd love to talk with you in more detail about some of the workloads that, that you're doing so that we can help guide you in your journey through the cloud. Absolutely. Great opportunity for me to resubmit that link. It's now in the chat and it actually lends itself nicely to a previous question we had about the $2,000 that used to be offered for the credit program that's now $1,000. And ultimately the reason behind that was that it allows for us to serve more nonprofits over the same amount of time. And when we were able to do that and make that change, what it allowed for us to do is open up other opportunities of support. And I encourage you to reach out to this link that I just posted in the chat. There are other ways and other credit programs that are still available for your organization. This is certainly just one of them. But by engaging in a relationship with AWS, again, we have people ready and willing and excited to speak with you. It's then that we understand your specific needs and can offer the resources, be it in credits or cash or IT support that can help you bring those ideas to fruition. 
So uh, before I go on to the next question, I want to ask those that are here and relatively new to AWS. I saw, again, a lot of plus twos at the beginning. AWS is relatively new to you. What excites you most about thinking about Amazon Web Services or the cloud for your nonprofit? Are you excited about the innovation opportunities? Are you perhaps excited about the cost savings? Is it maybe security? So go ahead and put it in the chat. I would love to hear from you kind of again, what was it about getting that email that let you know that AWS is having this as the experts that enticed you to joining? Um, would love to hear from a couple of people. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to go to another question. Uh, Mike, this is for you. And Ferdy uh, is an IT educator from the Philippines, explaining that a few weeks ago that they encountered so much traffic to their website that it, it started to perform poorly. Can you speak a little bit about elasticity and what AWS can provide uh, this Ferdy and their organization to help deal with changes in the volume of visitors to their website and ensuring it maintains performance throughout those fluctuations. Yeah, and, and this is a problem. So this problem is not limited to, you know, this one workload that Ferdy mentioned. We, we see customers struggling with this type of issue all the time where you either have spiky workloads or you suddenly get a large influx of traffic. You know, we noticed a lot of our customers that uh, either are in education or other things that were affected during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it seemed like overnight, many of our customers experienced large influxes of traffic and they weren't sure how to deal with it. So there are a number of ways that, that we can support this. First of all, we, we recommend that you make sure that your solutions are elastic and scalable. So if you're running on EC2, again, which is our virtual machine offering, make sure that you're running in an auto scaling group. Auto scaling groups can be configured so that they can automatically scale out or scale in your workloads, depending on your traffic. You can also use things like Amazon CloudFront which allows you, uh, CloudFront is our uh, content delivery network offering. And what this allows you to do is uh, allows you to uh, reduce the latency between, between your application and your end users. So if you have a, a worldwide audience, CloudFront can, can cache content uh, nearer to your end users uh, rather than have them come all the way to the U.S. or to you know wherever your your uh, your whatever region that you're you're using. In addition to that, you know CloudFront is uh, uh, like I mentioned, it's a great solution for for caching content. It's also a great solution if you've got any sort of streaming content that you want to distribute around the world. So that's um, you know the first part of that answer. That there are a lot of solutions, but we definitely want to look. Ferdy, at your specific workload to see what was causing the problems. And, and there may be uh, other things that we would su suggest as well. Fantastic. So um, yes, out, uh, Ferdy, the, you're speaking to the right people. That link, again, is in the chat. Uh, thanks so much for that information, Mike. And um, we're seeing a lot of feedback in the chat at the moment about cost savings. I want to pinpoint one particular I believe it's David that said that they're currently spending $700 a month on their hosting bill. So how can they maximize their cost savings? And that's their primary goal. Can you speak a little bit about what an organization who's currently paying for um, a large amount of hosting um, on site and how and why they should move to AWS? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Again, it, it really comes down to that, that comment I made earlier about the on-demand of IT, uh, on-demand delivery of IT services with pay-as-you-go pricing. So when you, you look at the, the things that you're, you're paying for, uh, you need to think about, you know, is this, is this workload something that I might want to turn on or off? Um, are there, you know, so there's that piece that could help re you reduce your cost. There are also things that AWS provides for example, some of our uh, machine learning services, which become a little more advanced, or we have uh, cost center solutions that uh, a lot of customers we see might end up paying you know, large amounts of money for these when they're not using AWS services. But then as you move to AWS services, because of our economies of scale and, and because of 
um, you know, a lot of other factors that, that uh, just based on how we operate, we're able to provide these services at a really low cost. And, and just by virtue of moving to some of these services can save customers a lot of money. And um, thank you for that, Mike. And I saw, David, you were talking about spending on AWS. And um, I can even speak to that, that, that there are uh, not only a lot of services within AWS to help ensure that you are optimizing your spend as best as possible. But again, I keep kind of going back to this point. There are resources available with AWS, live people like me and Mike, who can take a look at your AWS account with you and optimize your account to ensure that you maybe you only need to be spending six hundred and fifty dollars. Maybe it's sixty five dollars. I'm speaking directly to David in the case that they're currently spending seven hundred. We encourage you to speak to an individual, reach out to the team, and we can take a look under that hood and make sure your environment or your AWS usage is as optimal as possible. Um, hey, Jamin, one one thing really quick on that, if I could just add something. Of course. One service that is often overlooked that we recommend customers look at is Trusted Advisor. Trusted Advisor is a solution that exists within the AWS console and Trusted Advisor will tell you basically the, the, the health of your AWS account. And it will, part of Trusted Advisor will look at things that are underutilized. Like, do you have underutilized EC2 instances? Do you have EBS volumes that aren't attached to anything? You know, these are all sources of cost within your account. It, it looks at a number of other things. And when you look at Trusted Advisor, it'll actually make proactive recommendations on, you know, you really should turn off these things here if you can. And, uh, you know, these are some areas you could save money. So that's, uh, Trusted Advisor would be something I'd look at as really like the low hanging fruit of making sure you've got some of those obvious things taken care of to reduce your costs. And then once you've done that, then we can look at your workloads in more detail to help you reduce that further. Excellent. Um, and so we got a question as well, talking about S3. And I wanna call S3 is one of an AWS services. They're using it to hold their foundations offsite server backups. And their, their question, it was from David, asking if it's eligible for the uh, AWS nonprofit credit. And the answer is absolutely yes. The vast, vast majority of AWS services are covered by the AWS nonprofit credit program. So definitely scroll up. And in fact, I am going to resubmit it here. So we have all of the resources. Um, and uh, check out this credit program. It's uh, waiting for you um, to just take advantage of. Um, and then uh, one other question, and then I'm gonna go back and look at the chat to make sure I'm covering everything, was that what type of AWS support is free? And I think it's a very good question, right? Like having these conversations with AWS experts like myself and Mike, what's it gonna cost? And it's, it's a very valid point, but the good news is, is that it's free. We have an entire team dedicated to having these conversations, exploring ideas with you at no cost. Uh, in this link that I just sent you that says speak with AWS, you'll just wanna click it and then at the very top, it'll say, I believe, um, yeah, start a conversation. That'll get the ball rolling and having these uh, communications between you and AWS at absolutely no cost, just as an advisor to make sure that you're using the cloud the best to your ability. Yeah, I think that's but a great me... point. I mean, definitely, you know, James, you get that point. If um, we do, we definitely have options that do cost money. Like if someone wants um, uh, support to help build solutions, you know, we have uh, professional services, you know, we, we have more advanced support offerings depending on what you need, but, but you know, talking to me, we're talking to another solutions architect, that's always gonna be free. Excellent. Um, we have another question uh, from Marie. Uh, speaking, Marie B just alluded to the fact that they had a change in leadership over at her organization. Mike, from your perspective, what are some ways that someone with can help convey the value of cloud to either a new type of leadership, existing leadership. Um, what are some best practices you've seen? So the question is um, understanding the, the value of moving to the cloud. 
Yeah, and how to convey that to leadership and maybe yeah. what resources might be available for Marie to then pass on to her leadership. Yeah, well, uh, we have a, a lot of this, actually we have all of this material available on our website where we, on, on the AWS website, just aws.amazon.com, where we, we talk about the value of the cloud. But just to go through that, you know, pretty quickly, there are a lot of, a lot of reasons to move to the cloud. You know, the first is cost savings. You know, um, customers typically trade CapEx for OpEx by moving to AWS, and that OpEx spend is, is cheaper than if you were to do it on your own, again, because of our economies of scale. Uh, we're also innovating at a faster clip than, than our competition. I, I, I want to say, uh, you know, last year we, we released, what, 2,500 plus services on AWS, and, and you know, we're, our rate of innovation is increasing every year. What this means for you is that you don't have to put in that, that hard work of building these things. You can, you can leverage what AWS has already done. We, we like to talk about the term undifferentiated heavy lifting. And, and we define that as really the, the muck, the, you know, the work that you have to do that doesn't differentiate your organization from anybody else. So managing a server, for example, you, you might be doing it at a nonprofit or a, a charity, but you'd also be doing that if you worked for any Fortune 100 company. So again, that's not work that differentiates your business. Mm -hmm. And we oftentimes have the attitude of, if it's not differentiating your, your business or helping drive your mission forward, you shouldn't be doing it. And by leveraging a lot of the, the managed services that AWS offers, you can get away from that undifferentiated heavy lifting. Uh, some, some other things that, uh, that we have is, again, because of our rate of innovation, because of how easy it is to begin working on AWS, it's easy to begin experimenting and potentially innovating with your mission. So, you know, you think about the, the olden days, if you had an IT team where you said, I want to experiment on something, I need a server. Oftentimes it would take, you know, days, weeks, or even months to get a server spun up in, you know, the cloud you can have a, you click a button and you can have a server that you can experiment on immediately. And if that experiment doesn't work, you just decommission that server, no harm, no foul. You know, it's, it's really, really easy to do these kinds of things. Uh, you know, the, the last thing that really comes to mind is our global presence, where we have, uh, uh, the, we have a concept of a, a region, an AWS region, which is a physical location where we cluster data centers. And then we have logical groupings of those data centers we call an availability zone. Um, in each region, we have multiple availability zones, which again, constitute, again, each, each availability zone is two or more data centers. So, you know, just by moving to AWS, by following our best practices, you're spread out across multiple physical data centers, uh, which is likely already better uh, availability than, than most organizations have. And it's also important to note that our concept of a region and an availability zone is different from our competition. So for many of our competitors, they consider a region to be one data center or maybe even part of a data center. You know, and again, for us, that's not good enough. A, a, a region is a, a physical grouping of many, many data centers. Uh, so, so you know you're going to have higher availability uh, on AWS, and we have regions worldwide so you can deploy your workloads to the area that is needed the most. Jamin, is there anything that I left out that comes to mind? That was excellent, uh, Mike. Really robust, a lot of information. Um, I'll emphasize the point that you made at the beginning is that the website, as much as I hate telling people to go to the website, it really is the all-encompassing resource to arm you all with the information, not only to educate yourself about the value of AWS for nonprofits, but moreover to help spread that message to leadership to uh, promote adoption. So um, thank you so much, Mike, that was perfect. I uh, want to just make a last call for additional questions. I wanna call out Kirk, we definitely have your question. It's a little specific to your account. So I'm gonna encourage you to reach out to our AWS team through those links I sent through earlier, but I just want to say I hear you and I see you. And last call for information, 
Um, in the meantime, I also want to share my LinkedIn. Um, you know, I am a huge advocate for you all um, and, and I can represent AWFs on behalf of the nonprofits team. So just wanna make myself available if you have questions about AWS moving forward. Hopefully we've given you tons of resources to mull over and to think through, but additionally just wanted to share, feel free to connect with me. I'm happy to do whatever I can to make sure you get the information you need. Um, so, Marie, great question. What is the website that we're talking about to go to? I'll post it one last time. It's not exactly um, aws.amazon.com, but it's more specific just for nonprofits. It's the one right in the chat there. So, um, thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll pass it over to Aretha if you don't mind closing things out. But again, on behalf of AWS for Nonprofits, thank you all so much for your time. We're here to support you. And thank you for the incredible work that you're doing. You're really the champions here doing the, the hard work. So uh, it's a pleasure. Next time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you fill out the survey. Make sure you take care of yourself.